today in Jesus mighty name. So we are going straight into the word of God and um, our main scripture of the day is going to be in the book of Acts. If you just turn with me into the book of Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. And if you're there, you just say amen, so are we going to read the word of God? Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 14. I read in Jesus' name. The Bible says, In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instruction. I want you to underline the word instruction. Further instruction through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem. I want you to underline the word of Saul. Do not, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem. That is in verse 4. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem until the Father sent you the gift he promised as I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him as they strained to see him rising into heaven. Two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Amen to the word of God. Hallelujah. That was quite long, but uh, it's, it's, it's just to, to, to gather understanding and uh, the context of the Word of God. So, the message of today is titled, They, they That Wait Upon the Lord. That's the Word of God of today. They That Wait Upon the Lord. Hallelujah. We know that... Um, God always commands us to wait on him, to wait for his word to come to pass. 
to wait for his promises to be fulfilled for he is a God of time he is a God of season he is a God of out of season and the Bible says that as life still continues seed time and harvest time it will not cease amen so here we've got the word of God and verse 4 tells us if you go back in the Bible verse 4 tells us that once he was eating with them Jesus commanded them do not leave Jerusalem so here Jesus was telling his disciples he was preparing them for his departure and he was telling them that really I'm gonna send you there's a promise that the father has has proclaimed over you and that that promise is the Holy Spirit. He says that you will receive the Holy Spirit and as you receive the Holy Spirit then you will be my witnesses. At that moment, the Holy Spirit was just a promise. Amen. And we know that as children of God, the Lord has declared over our lives many promises. He says in his word in the book of Jeremiah that I know the thoughts, I know the plans that I have got for you. They are plans to prosper you. They are plans to heal you. They are plans to bless you. They are plans for joy, but not to harm you. I have no prepared plans to harm you. I have no prepared plans to bring evil to you, neither to your family, but I, the Lord, have got great promises over your life. Amen. And those promises, they are to bless you so that you will be happy. They are to bless you so that you will praise my name. The reason that I have created you is that I will fulfill my promises in your life. The reason that you exist is for the promises of God, the mandate of God upon your life to be fulfilled. Otherwise, there is no point for you to leave. Amen. So the disciples were here with Jesus waiting on the promise, the promise of the Lord. But he tells them one thing. He says it clearly in verse 4 that he commanded them to wait and he said do not leave Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. For the promises of God to be fulfilled in your life, you've got to keep one commandment. And then that commandment is always one. The Lord always asks us for his children to wait on him. To wait on him. Why? Because God has already set your life before him. He has already set period of time where you can go through period of time. You will face tribulation. You will face troubles. You will face trials. But then again, there's a time where the promises of God will be fulfilled. Field. But for those promises of God to come to pass in your life, you've got to wait on God. How do you wait on the Lord? How do you wait on the promises of God to come in your life? How do you do it? Amen. Amen. But now the Lord is telling you that the one command that you need to keep for the word of God to be fulfilled, you need to wait. And you need to wait on Him. Hallelujah. You need to wait on him. Why? For the Bible says again in the book of Numbers 23, verse 19, that God is not a man to lie. He is not a son of man to repent. Everything that he says, he will do. Everything that he will, he will declare, he will bring it to pass. At the appointed time, he will fulfill it. At the appointed time, he will glorify in your life. He will see yourself through. He will see you throughout that situation. But you need to wait on him. Amen. You've got to wait on the Lord. You've got to wait on the promises of God to be fulfilled. And God has not asked you to do anything. He does not ask you to do many things at the same time. He does not want you to help him to fulfill his promises over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. They are God's promises over your life. You did not declare those promises Amen. over your life. Amen. So he is in control of making sure that those will come to pass and then he's just telling you that you've got to wait on me I am in control you've got to wait on me I know the time I know the season I know the year I Amen. know the month I know the second but you've got to wait Amen. and as you are waiting don't try to help me out I don't need your help all I need is just wait Amen. wait on my word wait on the fulfillment of God Keep the commandment of the Lord. Amen. 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 If you try to do many things at the same time, hallelujah, this moment you are waiting on God, but at the same time you're like, God, oh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. 
But then again, it's not coming to pass. Maybe I should just try this way. I can see that my friends, they're doing it and it is working for them. Maybe I should just try to do it. Your, your human effort will not help you through. Amen. Your human effort will not see you throughout. But God's hand will see you throughout. Otherwise, if you try to do all those other things, it will bring confusion in your life. Amen. Amen. It will bring you distraction. Amen. You will not be able to see clearly. You will not be able to focus. Your mind, your spiritual eyes won't be able to, to, to see clearly and to perceive. Amen. To be able to discern when is God's time happening. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is that your vision, your spiritual eyes won't be able to see, to perceive, to discern or to recognize what God is doing if you are not just waiting on Him. Or if you are trying to do anything else than just waiting. God is just the only command, the only command that He has ever commanded His children on waiting on the promise, on His promises to become and to be fulfilled in your life is just to wait. Anything else will bring uncertainty, it will bring fear, it will bring doubt, it will bring confusion, and as you bring confusion in your life, then you will be wondering, what is happening, Lord? I thought that you said this. I thought that you said you will bless me. I thought that you said you will heal me. I thought that you said you will give me money. I thought that you said you will give me job, but how come I cannot see it? It's because when you try to do many things at the same time, you lose focus. You lose your, your, your spiritual ability to receive what God is doing for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to, to that same book so that um, we'll carry on. Yeah, so we're still in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse... Acts chapter 1, verse 4. So verse 4 says... He commanded them, do not leave. I hope that you're reading in your Bible. So, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sent you the gift he promised, as I told you before. Amen. So here, Jerusalem speaks of the church. Hallelujah. Jerusalem speaks of the church. Jesus is telling his disciples, Caesar, do not leave the church. Do not depart out of the church. Don't leave the church until what the Lord has said for your life will be fulfilled. He said, don't leave the church, Jerusalem. The church is speaking of Jesus. We know that the church speaks of Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. And we are, and the church is the body. And you are a member of the church. And he's telling you that don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave the church. If you try to come out of the church, the promise that I have proclaimed over your life, it will not come to pass. It's like the arm who is connected with my body. If this arm gets disconnected out of my body, it cannot function because I am the main, the vine. Jesus says that I am the head, I am the vine, that you are the branches. You need to be connected with me so that you can produce. You need to be connected with me, Jesus, so that you can have life. But if you come out of the church, if you don't attend the church, if you don't remain in the church, in the body of Christ, the promise of God will not manifest. Hallelujah. Amen. You won't be able to function properly. You won't be able to be in tune with God. You won't be able to know what is the Lord is doing exactly in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go, uh, we'll come back to this scripture. Let's go back in the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew 28. No, Matthew 11, sorry. Verse 28. Should I just say amen so that we'll read? Amen. amen. The Bible says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. So here Jesus is telling you that he is the rest. 
resting place. That he is the church. That when you come to the church, he will give you rest. All those things that you will be facing, the situation that you will be going through, but because you will still be connected with the church, because you will still be connected with him, you will still have rest. You will still have peace. He's going to carry those worries upon himself. He's going to take away your burdens and carry it for himself. He's going to take everything. He's just going to make sure that you have peace. You have you have joy. You have assurance that everything that God has said, he will come to pass. Outside of Jesus, there is no life. Only in him there is life. If you try to come out of the church, if you try to depart from the church, then you're going to run to the world. And we know that in the world there is suicide. In the world there is distress. There is depression. There is nothing that the world can offer you. Only in Christ you can have peace. Only in Christ you can have joy and your health but then again there's a condition you've got to wait you've got to remain in the church you've got to become attached and be in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ so that everything in your life will be fulfilled in Jesus mighty name amen, amen. so he says come on to me all you who are heavy laden and I will give you I will give you rest hallelujah God, the only intention of God is just that his children will be at peace. They will learn how to live in peace, even in situation, in hardship, in, in time of trouble, in time of worries. They will still know how to rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. In all things rejoice. I say it again. Rejoice in the Lord Amen. always because he is your joy. He is the reason that you are having joy in your heart. Why? Because he carries all of your burdens all the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to, to go in the book of Psalm 68 just quickly. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 verse 19. I'm going to read into the NLT so that you uh, Hallelujah. The Bible says, Psalm 68, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Praise God, our Savior. For each day he carries us in his arms. Hallelujah. And he says, Sheila. That means that wait a little bit. Meditate on it. God is telling you that for each day of your life, when you wake up every morning, that God carries you in his arms. It means that he carries all the worries of that day, that the day that you will face, the things that you will see, God carries it in your arms. Now, if you try to leave the Lord, if you try to depart from God, who's going to be carrying you each day, day by day? Who's going Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So that was just um, something that came to me right now. But let's go back to the book of Acts. Amen. Acts 1. Now let's just jump from, uh, from verse 9. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem. Amen. Let's just stop right there. We'll carry on. Hallelujah. So, we see that in verse 12, that the moment that they realized that Jesus went, Jesus was gone, was taken away from them. In verse 12, it says that the apostles returned to Jerusalem. So, what did they do? The number one, the only command that Jesus told them in back in verse 4, he told them that do not leave Jerusalem. The second, the moment that Jesus went up, they went and they obeyed the word of God. They obeyed that same command that Jesus told 
told them, he told them to go and to stay in Jerusalem, that they should not re- depart in Jerusalem. So they obeyed him. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm. Jesus wants us to obey his word. Every time that he speaks, hallelujah, every obedience, I want you to know that every obedience, every time that you decide to obey a single command of God, it releases a blessing over your life. If you decide to obey one, two, three, four commandments of God, then one, two, three, four blessings of God will be opened for you. For example, if you decide to obey that you um, you shall honor your father and your mother, amen, as you live so that you will live longer. So when you obey your mom and you obey your father, the blessing of that commandment is that you will receive long life. You will live eternally, and not eternally. You will live long and then you will enjoy life here on earth. And then again, if you decide as well to, to obey the, the commandment, for example, of uh, giving, giving your tithes, giving your offering to God. What it does, it will release the blessings that God will always provide for your needs because you respect the the, the, the law of giving to God. If you decide to obey the, the law of marriage, that you will abstain yourself, you will keep yourself holy, uh, 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 perfect and, uh, and sanctified yourself throughout the time of courtship, then what the Lord is promising is that he's going to bless your marriage. He's going to bless you with everything. So with every obedience of the word of God, there is a blessing that God opens for you so that you will enjoy. So they obeyed what Jesus told them. And then later on we see what happened to them. They saw the fullness, the completion of the promise of God coming to pass in their lives. Verse 13 says, When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they they were staying. Amen. So how do you wait on the Lord? That's what I want us to discuss now. The way that you wait on God is very simple. Is that one, number one, you need to remain in church. And number two, you need to go straight in your upper room and then stay there. And then when you are waiting, waiting on God doesn't mean that, okay, God has said he's going to bless me. God has said that I'm going to be financially prosperous. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The Lord has already spoken so much. So how do I wait on God? Doesn't mean that I just need to sit at home and then sleep. Doesn't mean that I just need to sit at home and then just wandering around or morning and morning. When is this promise is gonna come? And then here we see a perfect example on how to wait on God. For Jesus told them, wait in Jerusalem and straight they went in the upper room to wait. They were waiting in prayer. They were waiting, reminding the Lord, Lord, you said this, you're going to send the Holy Spirit. Lord, you said in your word that we're going to be your witnesses. Lord, you said in your word that throughout the world we're going to share about you. Fulfill your word, Lord. Fulfill your word, Lord. That's what they were doing in the upper room. And that God has called us to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When God has declared promises over your life, when God has declared that you shall be fruitful, when God has declared that you will be healthy, when God has declared that I have healed you, every promise of God is in the Bible. And then when you realize that there is something wrong somewhere, that the promises of God, you are still not living it. What are you doing concerning it? Do you just sit and just complain? Or do you wait in prayer? Do you spend your time? Do you have a time and dedicate a time when you just go in prayer and then just pray and commune with the Lord. Just pray and inquire from the Lord. When is it going to happen, Lord? This is what you said. Remind the Lord of his word. Say to him, you are not a man to lie. You are not a son of man to repent. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Amen. Amen. So this is what we see. That's what the apostles did. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to go into the book of um, first. I'm reading. My time is really going up fast. First Chronicles chapter 16. Yeah. 
The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And God wants you to be renewed all the time. From this day, learn how to wait on God. Amen. So, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11, the Bible says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Hallelujah. That's how you wait on God. Waiting on God is not sitting around and then wasting time doing nothing. Sitting around for the Lord. When you sit there, he's wondering, when are you going to come to me? I'm actually waiting for you to come. Because this is the reason why I told you I have blessed you. But then again, there's a time to wait. During that time of the period of waiting, don't sit around sleeping. Don't be sitting around, I don't know, mocking people, gossiping, wondering what is God doing. But he's telling Seek my face, seek my desires, seek me continually. Do not stop seeking my face. Do not stop. We know that seeking God is part of a part of this. Is that you need to read the word of God? One of us you need that you need to be prayerful, and then part of it is that you need to be in prayer and fasting. Those are the three things that help us to seek God. So you need to be able to exercise those things all the time, continually seeking God's face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's go to the book of Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. This one is actually interesting to see how God is explaining to us the importance of uh, coming to him continually. Hallelujah. Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. If you're there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen on your walls. They will pray day and night continually. Take no rest. This is God speaking, you know. He says, Take no rest, all you who pray to the Lord. Give the Lord no rest until he completes his works, until he makes Jerusalem the pride of the earth. Amen. So he's telling you, this is the Lord speaking to us. He said that you are a watchman over your life, that I have set you there to watch over the promises that I have proclaimed over your life. But then again, do not take rest. God is asking you, don't be resting. And then even though, don't also give me rest. God doesn't want to rest at all. He said, keep on coming to me. Keep on bothering me. Although to him is not bothering at all. Because God is always willing to hear your voice. He is a heavenly father. Any father in a home, in your home, you want your son to come to you. You want your son, you want to hear the voice of your son. And then each day, each night, God is telling you, keep on coming to me. Don't take rest. You are a watchman. You are an intercessor over your life, over your destiny. You are the one who's going to make sure that those things will come to pass. God will not do it. For the Lord has already spoken. But then again, you need to wait. And then in the time of waiting is to remind God when you are speaking those words that God has already proclaimed. He is making the Holy Spirit to come out and to fulfill those words that he has already spoken over your life. Genesis, how God said, how God declared, let it be a light. He spoke, but then the Holy Spirit had to bring the manifestation of let it be the light. So when you are declaring, Lord, you say that I will be blessed. The Holy Spirit is hearing, she is saying that I said she will be blessed. So I want to fulfill everything that she's claiming continually, not taking rest, no minding that she's bothering me. Is 
word. That's why he says, I am not a man. I am not going to repent. All that I said will come to pass. All that I proclaimed will come to pass. But then again, I need a watchman. I've already put a watchman over you. You are the first watchman over your life. Not the pastor. Not the intercessor in the church. But you are the first watchman over your own life. The moment that you have discovered the truth, make sure that you declare the truth. The promises of God is truthful. They are reliable. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. He says day and night meditate upon it. The more you meditate, you are discovering the promises of God over your life. And when the enemy tries to come to destroy any part of your life, you will know that mm -mm -mm, God has declared that I shall be this. Now if this is not this, I'm going to declare the word so that the Holy Spirit will bring everything back in line with the promises of God over my life Amen. in Amen. Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah thank you father so um, that was Isaiah 62 mm -hmm. Amen. if we go back into the I think the same as Isaiah 49 Amen. So, yeah. Isaiah 40, verse 31. I'm going to read to the King James Version. He says it better. Isaiah. Excuse me. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Amen. The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I repeat, but they that wait upon the Lord. I want you to replace that wait is they that continuously pray to the Lord. They shall renew the strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. So we see that those who wait on God, those who wait in the Lord, for the Lord, in the closet, in the time of prayer, meditating, seeking God's face, the Bible says it's only people that their strength will be renewed. Why is the strength will be renewed? Because they are spending time. That's why he says take no rest. He says that because they are spending time in the presence of God. There is this song that says it's in his presence that I am I am made stronger. It's in his presence that I belong. So it's when you are spending time in the presence of God, though the, pre the promises of God is tiring, though the promises of God is taking long, instead of you becoming weary, instead of you becoming faithless, instead of you starting to doubt, instead of you starting to be discouraged, the Bible says actually you will be the contrary. You will be renewed in the Lord. Your faith will be strengthened. Your time of trials, you will see it as nothing. There will be no discouragement that will rise in you. There will be no discouragement that will come to overtake you. Nothing like that will happen because you are waiting upon the Lord. You are in the presence of the Father always. You are in mind. You are in tune with God all the time. That's why your strength will always be renewed. That's why you will walk and you will not faint. In those times when, when people will be like, What's happening with the promises of God? I thought that God said he's going to bless you. People will be mocking you. People will be wondering what is happening. I thought that you were praying a good God. I thought that you were, I thought that you were praying a faithful God. So what is happening to those promises? Instead of you being affected to those negative reports, actually you will be strengthened. You will be telling them that, oh, actually I know. I know what is happening. I can see what is happening because you are spending time in the presence of God. And as you are spending time in the presence of God, you are seeing, you know what God is doing. God is feeding you back. He's telling you that almost there, my child. You can make it. We are almost there. Just keep 
on waiting on me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Habakkuk 2, verse 3. But this woman, this woman, he's driving me crazy. 
I'm going to see that she gets justice because she, she is wearing me out with her constant request. Verse 6. Then the Lord said, Learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he, re he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice? to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night. He, will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Amen. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. We have this beautiful story of a, of a widow and an unjust judge who really doesn't care about doing good things to people. And uh, the Lord Jesus was just giving this example and giving, uh, giving an illustration of how we as children of God, because the judge is, is, is speaking of God and the widow is speaking of uh, Christians, how, how we, we also need to keep on going to the Lord repeatedly, continuously, in other versions as he says, that we need to keep on, not, not to forsake, keep on going to God, telling him, this woman will just keep on saying one thing. Verse 3 says that she keep on saying, give me justice in the dispute of my enemy. Can you imagine day and night when the judge wakes up in her in his house, she, she, he will hear this woman, give me, give me justice against my enemy. Give me justice against my enemy. In the night time, he will hear the woman, give me justice against my enemy. Give me justice against my enemy. And then the Lord is saying that this is the same thing that I want you guys to do. That I don't want you to if you don't know how to pray, it doesn't matter. But just know the things that you know. Keep on coming to me. Know the things that you know. If you know it for sure, if it's so important to you that you will not be tired to keep on coming to me. You will not be tired to keep on coming in prayer and asking me. But at the end he says that, but when the Son of Man will return, how many people will he find on earth who will still have faith for you to keep on going to God in prayer, then you must know that God is the one, amen, amen. that will reward those who diligently seek him, the Bible says. That those who come to the Lord, they need to know that God is the one who rewards those who seek his face diligently. There's faith. There must be faith in your heart for you to keep on going to God and asking God, the Lord, fulfill your promise. I know that you can fulfill your promise. So, Lord, fulfill it. You, you know what? What the Lord Jesus is trying to tell us in this story is that uh, though it takes long, but do not lose your faith in God. Do not lose your faith in God. Do not be discouraged because God cannot lie. God cannot repent. His words will surely come to pass. But one thing he's just asking you, keep on coming to him day and night. Like this widow, until the end, that judge go fed up and he said, you know what? I'm just going to give you justice so that you will leave me at peace. But our God, our Father, doesn't want us to leave him at peace at all. He wants us to be always in relationship with him. He wants us always to be coming to him in prayer and letting him know what we need, our desires, so that our heart will be full with the joy of God. But you need to have faith in the Lord. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. So you need to keep on staying in the word of God. Keep on coming in church. And the Lord will surely bless you. Hallelujah.